Chapter 3, Section 7, Strain Measurement and Rosette Analysis. So the learning objectives, what we're working on today is we're going to, this is continuing to do strain transformations so that we can understand the state of stress, strain, in different coordinate systems. And so this is going to involve, um, this won't involve finding maximum and minimum. What we're going to do is take strain data and then convert it into data that we can use um, because we don't get exactly what we want. The equations we're going to be working with, well, I'd say they're those equations, and I probably grabbed those because they're easy to, they were easy for me to copy. But really, it's, it's that equation is the one equation we're going to use in this section. We're just going to use it multiple times. So, so let's start out with the fact that we measure strain. We measure, um, how an object stretches and we do it with strain gauges and I, I will have some of those in class uh, this week and we when they stretch um, the wires get thinner that changes their electrical resistance when they stretch they get longer that changes their electrical resistance so they get thin and long both changes work in the same direction and so they run you can see all these different and change to red here they run all these different coils back and forth. And the reason they do that is because if they only did one, there wouldn't be enough change to really measure. So they run it back and forth and back and forth. So they get that change over and over and over. And then it's actually something that they can measure. And that gives you the strain in one direction. And that's a good start. The problem, one of the problems is we can't measure shear strain. And so, in order to measure the shear strain, we could set one gauge up for X and one gauge up for Y, but we can't measure the shear. So we have to measure three different strains and then convert them to get them in with, into what we want to know. So the question needs to be, should be, how do we, how, how do we do that? So we start with something called a strain rosette, and that's what you're seeing up in the corner there. Um, we're taking three different measurements of strain or strain in different directions and you're going to you you build those or you buy them from a company like Omega where you know what the angle is between those and then you get the data on those three axes once you've got that you can convert that to X Y and shear using the transformation equations Essentially, you're going to have three unknowns that you're looking for. This, the normal stress in the X, the normal stress in the Y, and the shear strain in the XY. And so you've got three different, you'll need three different equations to get those three unknowns. And as I said, you're going to use that one equation three different times. That, that equation is the strain in the normal direction is equal to the strain in the X direction cosine squared theta. You know the equation. We're going to use that once for each data point that we have. And so what that means is we will write down the strain in the n direction, which is a known. We measured that. And we know the direction. So then that's going to be equal to the strain in the x times cosine squared. Uh, you know what? I'm going to change this because um, I'm going to change color because... This is cosine squared theta, where that's known, and then I'm going to get sine squared theta, and that's known. My strain in the y isn't known, plus tau xy, and then I know sine theta cosine theta. So, and and maybe realistically, I, I guess I should have put that back as a as a blue one. I've got my three variables, my three variables that I'm looking for, everything else is known. So if I do that for each direction, I'll be all set. I'm gonna do that for, if I looked at the previous gauge, I know the direction in this direction, which is gonna be the theta equals zero direction. I know this direction, which is theta equals 45. And I know that direction, theta is equal to 90. Now, one of the things that should come out of this, should jump out of this, is that if we've, well, and I'm gonna, I know that's on another slide, so I'm gonna jump, I'll save it till later, but, but now we've got three equations, three unknowns. 
here's what I was talking about. There, the one trick that you need to know when you do this is that there's really only two varieties of strain rosettes. There could be an infinite number, really. But the way people build them is either in this orientation, the 0, 45, 90, which we were looking at, and this triangle, the equilateral uh, triangle, where they're at 0. This is my 0. And then this is 120. And that is 240. That's the way to think about that. It's a 0, 120, 240. Now, some people will call it a 0, 60, 120. Um, yep, that's fine because this is, while this is 240, it's also 60. If I had drawn it, well, you can figure that out. Sorry, it's not 60. It's one's plus 120, one's minus 120. Anyway, there we go. Um, <clears throat> there could be others, but there really aren't. Those are the way that they get manufactured by the um, by the equipment manufacturer. So the equations solve the same, but each one has its own little advantages. So for the 0, 45, 90, the strain in the 0 direction is typically what we just labeled the strain in the x direction. And the strain in the, y, in the 90 degree direction is the strain in the y direction. It, or, yeah. Here's my three, 0, 45, 90. And if I look at my equation, the strain in the n direction is strain in the x, cosine squared theta plus strain in the y, sine squared theta plus the shear, st sorry, shear strain gamma, sine theta, cosine theta, you know, I might have to go back now and look to see if I actually put in a gamma, but um, I'm guessing I put in a tau. Um, you can see if I put in zero for cosine, then that goes to one if the angle is zero. And this goes away at zero. At theta equals zero, that's equal to zero. And then this is equal to zero. So the only thing I'm left with is, and this is one, the cosine squared is one, so the strain in the n direction is the strain in the x direction. Strain in n is equal to strain in x. That's what that sentence is saying. If I change colors and I say I'm going to go with 90 degrees, then cosine of 90 goes to 0. So that goes to at theta equal to 90. That goes to 0. And so then this would go to 0. And so the only thing I'm left with is this. The only thing I'm left with is this term, which goes to 1, then I get this sentence. The strain in the 90 direction is the strain in the y direction. You only need to use the equation once to solve it for the shear strain. And that's interesting, too, <coughs> because cosine squared and sine squared of 45 degrees are equal to the same. It's equal to square root of 2 over 2. Well, if you square root of 2 over 2, if you uh, multiply that out, you get equals strain in the x direction times 1 half plus the strain in the y direction times 1 half plus gamma xy and then sine of theta and cosine theta 1 half. And there you go. And so now you know what? strain in the x is, you actually can substitute strain in the 0 plus strain in the y direction, but that's just strain in the 90 direction plus gamma over, there you go. So that equation, once you've done it a couple times, you go, oh yeah, that makes sense. All right, let's look at the other one. The 0, 120, 240 or the 0, 60, 120, the um, strain in the zero direction is strain in the x. So that saves us one equation. And then when we get the 60 and the 120 equations, if you do them both and add them together, the shear term drops out. And so you've already solved for x, and now you have, you, you, when you sum them together, they drop out, and so you're all set. And we'll show that in example seven. You'll see how that plays out. And that makes those a little easier to solve. Again, some of this is experience. 
the reality is if you're going to do this on a regular basis, um, you're going to program it into your calculator that you put in the data and it spits out the stresses or sorry, it prints out the strains and then it might spit out the stresses in those directions. And then it might do a stress transformation and give you the principal stresses. All those things are very likely impossible. So the next video, the next presentation is going to be example problem 3.7, where we're going to look at this, this particular arrangement of a 0, 0.6120 or a 0, 0.12240, depending on what you want to call it. Um, we'll look at that arrangement on the, um, and, and we'll solve for the stresses in the, in the X, Y, and the shear, sorry, not the stresses, the strains. We'll solve for the strains in the X, the Y, and the shear strain. So, all right. Be well. See you in class.